Assalamu alaikum everyone. We'll continue here with the secretion of milk. So we all are familiar that basically milk is secreted from the udder of the cow, right? And what is udder? If you take a look, mind you, my drawing is not that fabulous. And with this tab, it's spectacular. So just I'm trying to make you understand a bit better as compared to what's already available, right? So let's hope it's a good good uh, output at the end. So the udder is basically a hemispherical organ which is divided into right and left side. Let's just write it down and then excess I'll remove later. These two parts are further divided into quarters by the help of a transverse line which is sort of like a crease, but shallower. Okay, since this is a shallower crease, if we take a look, this section will result into the formation of its own teeth. Similarly, this section will result into the production of its own teeth canal, then their own chamber segregation also, right? So inside, they are technically separating into how many types of milk? One, two, three, four. And you know what the interesting part is? Theoretically, it is possible to get four different types of milk from the same animal, right? From the same cow, it is possible. Because that's the point of saying this is so that you can understand how much the production process of each teeth is different from the second, third, and fourth one. Yeah? Okay, cool. Let me rub these numbers and give it to you an idea of what's happening if you tear, you know, take a look at what's happening inside. So what is here? The udder is basically composed of glandular tissue which are enriched with the milk producing cells okay so what do we have here is further inside this lining inside this lining there are there is a protective casing of muscular tissue the purpose of this muscular tissue is to provide any sort of protection to the body from knocks or from blows like any sort of injuries right and also give cohesion to the body of the other it's like keeping it all intact right okay it's providing a cohesive structure other than protection from sort of different sorts of injuries cool so going ahead this glandular tissue contain a large number of tiny bladers called alveoli we are a bit familiar with the structure since we studied the respiratory network beforehand, right? So we are already familiar how the alveoli work, how the capillaries are, how smaller this the surfaces is, and how the you know continuously deoxygenated and oxygenated blood transfers the uh, the nutrient content, right? Okay. So the milk producing cells. Let me make a structure so you can have an idea. If we have the inner structure, we get like the network of uh, this network of branch membrane sort of structure is visible. And if you have further magnification, wrong sort of marker it was, when you further magnify this area, you'd see that it actually contains the group of eight to approximately 120 milk producing cells are located in the form of bunch on the inner walls of these alveoli so these groups are enriched with capillaries where they are responsible for the production of milk so all the production of milk is happening here if you take a look from here, what's the structure like? Structure is something 
like this. Okay, let me make it once so that I can explain it better rather than you know messing up the figure and the explanation together. Okay, so this is how it is. This if you just label it all sister where all the milk gets collected once it's produced inside the capillaries right what else this next portion is the teat cistern this portion after the cistern is the teat cistern that indicates that the area going towards the teat okay this over here if you take a look inside from where the milk can be ejaculated out of the body of animal is known as teat channel from where the milk is ejaculated out right and yeah so let's have a detailed understanding of how the stru uh, structure of the cell looks like where the milk is being produced so inside the alveoli, we get a boundary like this, right? Then we put different other sort of the muscular cells, which have their own properties. So this alveoli structure, the capillaries inside, leading from the alveoli, they converge and then they progressively make a large milk duct which leads into the cistern so the milk production this happening inside this happening inside this is milk production is happening over here when the milk is produced it gathers into the cistern from there in cistern after getting collected right this cistern can approximately hold up to 30% of the total milk volume in the udder. Okay, alright? This is like a storage tank. And when the body is stimulated, then further the milk goes down the teat canal. And then finally at the teat channel and then the teat cistern, right? Okay, so... Okay, so let me just give you a bit of an explanation on the teat cistern and the teat canal over here, right? Once we are already familiar with the production of the milk. Cistern of the udder, right? That is this section, right? Uh, cistern of the udder, it's actually extending. It's an extension that reaches down to the teat and is known as teat cistern. This channel ends up into the formation of teeth cistern and there is the teeth which um, which usually is basically consisting of sphincter muscles that prevents the milking milk process milk from leaking out and you know when it's not stimulated the sphincter gets closed off so um that why they why the structure of sphincter is there at the ending that's because the bacteria otherwise would be entering the udder and different sort of diseases would there be accumulating and you know then being multiplied to different you know the process would be never ending so sphincter muscles somehow protect the inner environment from the external environment completely so the whole udder is laced with blood vessels, with lymph vessels, which are completely responsible for bringing the nutrient-rich blood from the heart to the udder, which we are already familiar, are distributed with the help of capillaries over here, like we talked before, right? 
uh, that's how the basically milk continuously milk supply brings on new nutrients and takes off the deoxygenated blood the um, approximately research says that flow of blood through the other is if you take an idea that's around 90,000 liters per day flow of blood through the other 90,000 liters per day yes so approximately 800 to 900 liters of blood is needed to produce one liter of milk yes 800 to 900 liters of blood is needed to produce one liter of milk so it's it's hard work and it's highly respected okay we usually take things which are widely available as for granted right so this makes us appreciate all the bounties that we have we've been given for the feed okay so uh, since this whole process of the milk most of the milk in the udder is however contained in the alveoli and the fine capillaries in the alveoli in the structure that I explained beforehand right so most of the milk is in the alveoli structure and then once this whole area is fulfilled and the pressure is completely reaching to its upper limit then it begins to drop down towards this area in the system okay so what's happening next now the capillaries are so fine that milk cannot flow through them of its own accord it must be pressed out by the alveoli and through the capillaries into the larger duct right so what what's happening here is if the cell was originally like this then it gets you know extended to its maximum capacity and then what do we have to do we have to put some sort of external pressure on these alveoli to make sure all the milk is then excreted out and it's collected in the cistern area right this is how basically milking or the expression of milk from the alveoli is done and um, yeah muscle like cells surrounding the l form this function whenever the milking process is going on i hope it was helpful in understanding the basic idea how it happens and yeah, I will see you in the, in the next lecture or the PowerPoints.